been following me on Instagram for a while, you probably know that I'm very, very into weightlifting. I got back into it recently because I was able to go to a gym again and I've been doing it now for five years, which is like more than a quarter of my life. Oh my God. Let me just preface by saying I'm not an athletic person. Like me, myself, I'm not naturally gifted at sports. Feel talky. I was the most hated person on the team. I'm not athletic. I always just consider myself unathletic because I couldn't run a mile. So I always stayed away from the gym and I never thought that that would be something that I would be interested in. But in reality, I like love it to pieces. Now I'm a little weightlifting lady. Ooh, ooh, guns, wow. I first heard because I was inspired by other people that I would see online. I'm like, that is so badass. Women like taking charge in the gym. But I had no idea where to start. But once I actually took the time and also a bit of money to invest in myself. And that's when I made a really big change. But not just my body, but way more mentally. So while I'm not a trainer by any means, and there are so many very talented and smart and educated people and creators out on the platform that can teach you all about proper form and proper movement. You might be lost if you literally don't know where to start. Like you're like, I don't even know how to get a gym membership. I don't even know how to walk into a weight room with confidence. That's what this video is for. I truly just had to figure it out all on my own. Wow, that's great. I wanna save you guys the time. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna be nasty, if not you're discussing. Also make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If you wanna see very specifically what kind of movements and exercises I do, the next few weeks in my vlogs, I'm gonna be including my workouts. So check my vlogs out, cause I'm a little vlogging lady now. Well, today we are talking about the benefits of taking care of yourself, how to do so properly. I did wanna mention that today's video is sponsored by Ombre, who has helped me benefit my health so much. Thank you so much Ombre Lab for sponsoring today's video. If you're struggling with a health issue and you just can't seem to find a cause, you're Gut may be to blame. Did you know that your poop holds the secret to a healthier life? Yes, I said that. This is all because your poop is actually the most effective way to measure gut bacteria. For example, your mental health is strongly related to your gut. If you are struggling with bloating, constipation, abdominal pain, weak immune system, constantly getting sick, skin blemishes, and even your daily happiness and mental health can all be to blame because of your gut. Your gut contains trillions of bacteria, good and bad. And when your body doesn't have enough good bacteria, the bad bacteria flourishes. The good thing is, is that Ombre Lab actually makes it really easy to measure your gut health at home. The at-home test kit measures your bacteria levels by testing your poop. The test will ship straight to your door with easy to follow instructions, and don't worry, it's all very sanitary. Upon receiving your results, Ombre Lab will give you a very detailed breakdown of your gut bacteria and what specific foods you need to be consuming more or less of to be benefiting your health. For example, I was recommended that I increase my celery, chicory, potato, shiitake mushroom, and asparagus intake to improve my health, which is great because I actually love all of those. They will even develop personalized probiotics to help heal your gut with a subscription. So if you're struggling with any of the symptoms that I mentioned, if you wanna see if your poop has the answers, visit tryombre.com slash Nicole Raffi to get $30 off your test. Thank you so much, Ombre, for sponsoring today's video. Go test your poop. Thank you, Ombre. Let us get started. I asked you guys on my Instagram what questions you want answered. Here they are. Where do I start? Great question. You need to know what kind of goals you have for yourself. Personally, for me, I wanted to gain muscle and gain weight. That was my number one goal going into the gym. I knew in order to reach those goals, I needed to be in a caloric surplus. I also needed to be pretty consistent with the gym lifting heavy, gaining muscle that I didn't have prior. It's so much easier walking into the gym with a plan, whether that's having your workouts written out for you. But I know some people like to start out with a trainer. Some gyms offer trainers that, that can help you with your goals. No trainers can be a bit expensive, but I will be linking some YouTubers down below that I highly recommend that teach you proper form, proper exercises for whatever muscle group you're targeting. But we'll get into that later. How do I pick a gym right for me? Okay, so I've tried many different gyms now. So I started off with Planet Fitness. People shit on Planet Fitness all the time, but it is cheap, it's effective, and most of the time it has what you need. It doesn't have everything, but it has a lot, and it's like $5 a month. At least that's what it was a few years ago. Inflation. I liked Planet Fitness when I went. It just got really, really busy sometimes. I transitioned over to my college gyms, which were a bit intimidating. Temple University had like three, four different gyms to choose from. But the strictly weightlifting one was so intimidating to me at first, but it ended up becoming my favorite gym. If you're in college, college gyms, a lot of time have everything. I went to another small like local gym that wasn't as great and I didn't really love the environment. Overall, my favorite gym that I have ever been to is the one that I'm currently at. And it's actually more targeted towards 
older people. Most of the time when I'm there, I'm the youngest person there and it's pretty much just elders, which I love. For me, it's affordable. It doesn't have a bunch of like flashy things. Like I personally don't need a pool. I don't need a sauna. I don't need showers. It has a weight room. It has a cardio room. It has machines. Everyone has been so friendly to me there. No one has been creepy or weird to me. Maybe one guy, but that's like anywhere. I recommend doing research on the gyms in your area. A lot of times smaller local gyms will actually be a lot better in my opinion, rather than huge, large businesses. But sometimes you're kind of limited with your options. But like I said, Planet Fitness can be as cheap as $5. And the most I've ever paid for a gym is $30 a month. What do I eat before and after the gym? Great question. Okay, so before the gym, I usually go to the gym in the morning. So beforehand, I'll have oatmeal. I know it's crazy. Nicole eats oatmeal now or bagels. I'll just eat a lot of carbs. Carbs are not bad for you. Carbs are very good for you. They fuel you. I usually try to eat a lot of carbs. My body has a lot of energy. Try and hydrate really, really well. Eating fruit, my body responds really, really well to fruit when I eat it before the gym. After the gym, I'm usually pretty hungry. I just have a large appetite. So I will like eat a protein bar on the way home. And then when I get home, I will either make a protein shake or I'll try to make myself lunch and I'll like make protein pasta. Personally, I'm vegan, so I get creative with what kind of recipes I make. A source of protein and carbs after a workout is amazing because it's fueling the muscles that you just worked on. And of course, lots of hydration after too. But you should be eating. Eating is so important. Fuel your body. Do not limit yourself. What do you do once you walk into the gym? When I walk in, I literally have like horse flap blinders on. Like I just see straight. I have no peripheral vision. I don't care. I know I always felt very awkward walking into the gym. I used to just walk straight into the weight section and do what I needed to do. Or I would go into the locker room when my gym had one. Now I do what I properly should be doing and I go and stretch for like 10 minutes. I was told in the past stretching is not important and I just stuck with that for years. Normally most gyms have like a little warm up section. And so I'll go there and I'll do my stretches and I'll do my little warm up. At first I felt like so silly and I was like, oh my God, I'm not lifting. Like everyone thinks I'm just here to do like stretches, but I'm like, who cares? You're supposed to be stretching. Like that's, we're literally taught that as little kids in gym class, like you're supposed to. How to get over the fear of stepping into a weight room. So first of all, people will only be impressed that you're in the weight room. I think a lot of times, especially some gyms, weight rooms can look dark or cold depending where you go. We always envision it as completely filled with men and no women are around. When in reality, a lot of gyms will not even be like that. Personally at my gym, the weight section is like the least used section. So that's kind of why I said like, look into like smaller local gyms around you and see if it's big enough for what you need. Something that I've also been incorporating in my life is doing things ironically to benefit me. I saw this trick on TikTok, but essentially I started doing things for my health ironically. And then eventually I just started doing them naturally. So for example, yesterday, I really did not want to go into the gym. I just was so anxious. I didn't want to go in. That that was the last thing I wanted to do. I wanted to go home and just like go back to bed. But then I really thought to myself and I remembered the trick from TikTok and I was like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go lift weights ironically. And I'm ironically going to go take care of my health. I'm ironically gonna go make myself feel better mentally. So I recommend practicing little things in your life ironically every day. Ironically, make your bed in the morning. Ironically, go make breakfast. Ironically, go outside for some sunshine. Just like, it'd be so ironic and funny if you did that. Do people judge you based on how much you're lifting? I don't remember the last time I've ever looked at someone and looked at how much they were lifting. Like I said, I have little horse flap blinders on. So in my head, I'm like, no one's looking at me because I'm not looking at anyone else to know if they're even looking at me. You also have to remember that everyone starts from somewhere. Everyone starts at the lightest weights at one point or another. I started at the lightest weights. And so if I were to ever see someone lifting the lightest weights, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. They're like on their journey to weightlifting. That's so cool. I'm never judging anyone else and no one has ever said anything negative to me about how much I was lifting. And so I would hope that everyone else would give you the same respect. I've never heard of anyone else getting like laughed at or shamed about that. How to feel like you're not taking up too much space. You're entitled to be there just as much as everyone else's. Obviously there is gym etiquette, which I will get into, but you are not taking up too much space by just simply existing and being at the gym. If you're using a machine and someone else wants to use it and they're being a jerk about it, Oh well, should have gotten there faster. Like, <laughs> you pay for your membership, you deserve to be there. Do not apologize for taking up room. At my old gym, people would always come up to you and ask you how many more sets you have of something just so that they knew when they could jump on. And I would always apologize and be like, oh no, I'm so sorry. Like, why are you apologizing? You're doing your own thing. You're entitled to be there. How do you work out in front of other people? It really is just about growing confidence and giving yourself time with that. In the beginning, 
for me, it was like embarrassing and I felt like I was doing something wrong and that other people were watching me. But like I said, I just try to remember, I'm not watching anyone else. I'm Everyone's focused on themselves. No one is gonna be that focused on you. I also don't know any of these people outside of the gym. And even if I did, I don't care. I'm doing something cool for myself and it's a natural thing. So why should I be embarrassed of that? I showed up for me and I pay way too much for my membership to be spending that time worrying about what someone else is thinking of me. You grow more confidence the longer that you spend time in the gym, the longer that you know how to use the machines or the weights better. And if anyone is judging or staring at you, they are the weird ones. And that is like a universal rule. What is gym etiquette? Okay, I probably will miss some and it might go from gym to gym, but these are the most basic ones. Wipe down whatever you are using after you're done using it. When you use a bench, go to the little spray thing. Sometimes they'll have wipes, wipe it down. You will create butt crack sweat, at least I do. And if you don't, good for you. Always put your weights back where they belong and don't put the 25s back where the 15s are. Stick to your section. Don't bop around like five different places at once. Kind of pick a spot. I'll usually pick a spot behind a bench if I don't need the bench. I'll find a spot where there's not a lot of people and I'll make that my own space. Mind your business. Don't stare at others. Don't interrupt others. Never walk up to someone when they're in the middle of a set. Like if they're in the middle of working out, don't come up to them. It's dangerous and at that time they need to focus. And don't take other people's things. Like if someone has a dumbbell and they're not using it at the time, don't just grab it. For the most part, that's really it. You'll be fine. There's not like some secret hidden rules or anything. It's just about being polite and respectful. Don't grunt or scream either. I don't feel like I have to tell you guys that, but some men just don't get that. What do I wear? Whatever you want, baby. That's the fun part. <laughs> My fashion at the gym has really, really evolved over the years. I used to just wear like whatever leggings I I had um, and then sometimes like a big t-shirt. It's kind of evolved where I like buying gym clothes now. Like it's just fun for me. I love this top. I get a lot of questions about it. My manager got it for me. It's from Manduka. I recently just started wearing beanies to the gym because my hair will be oily and this covers it up. I used to be a little gym shark girl. Not really into them anymore. My favorite all-time brand of gym clothes, you probably know this from Instagram, it's Girlfriend Collective. They're a bit on the pricier side, but they're very sustainable and ethical with their practices and their clothing is extremely high quality and I love their colors. If you're looking into invest in a few pieces from them because I only need a few pairs of things because I just wash everything, that's perfect. For shoes, I wear Converse, which I get a lot of questions about. I wear Converse because it's actually recommended by weightlifters uh, to keep your feet as flat as possible with the ground. Some people like Vans, I just prefer Converse. I'll link everything down below, of course. I use these when I'm using the treadmill. I don't wanna wear Converse on the treadmill. Some people just wear sports bra and leggings. Some gyms have a dress coat, so look into that. These are just some things that I wear to the gym. I feel comfortable in it. Sometimes I'll wear a sweatshirt or a hoodie when I'm doing legs because I wanna keep my body warm. But it's entirely up to you and what you're comfortable in. The more comfortable you feel in whatever you're you're wearing, even if you feel cute in it, you will probably do better at the gym, to be honest. And that completely <laughs> plays into confidence. Truly, whatever makes you feel like a baddie, to be honest. How do you understand reps and sets? Okay, so for example, you'll see this if you're looking up a workout online. Four by 10. Four is the amount of sets and 10 is the amount of reps. Normally reps will be higher than the set number and usually set comes first. If you're doing a bicep curl, pretend this is my little barbell, You'll be doing it 10 times. And then when you stop for the 10, you did the first time around, you're gonna pause. You're just gonna like chill out for like a minute, let your muscle rest. And then you're gonna repeat three more times for a total of four. 10 reps, four times. How do you stay motivated? I remember how good I feel whenever I go. Like if there's a day I ever don't wanna go and it's not because I need to rest, it's just cause I just don't feel like going. I remind myself how good I feel when I get out of the house. I usually feel a lot more clear minded. I also have never regretted going. I've only regretted not going. And it's also like my own little personal passion project for myself where I'm like working on myself and I only give a shit about myself. And there's no like money to gain. I'm not doing it for anyone else. I'm doing it strictly for myself. Also, people like to take progress pictures, which helps if you're like trying to change how your body looks, for example. Personally, that's just not what I'm going for right now. But if you are, it's really nice to take progress pictures once every few weeks to see how you're progressing. It's a whole lot better than stepping on a scale and looking on the number on the scale because the scale 
does not, it doesn't matter. What does matter is how you feel, your health, and also if you're happy when you look at yourself. Just find your reason as to why you're doing it. A lot of times it's because I want alone time, to be honest. Is it worth having a personal trainer? Only if you have the time and money and it's something that you seriously want to invest in yourself. Like for me, where I didn't know what I was doing at all, workouts on YouTube were not that big of a thing back then when I started. So it was really tough to kind of teach myself what I was doing and I didn't have any friends to really teach me. So for me, it was a great investment for myself and for the future. And once I learned what I needed to do, I was able to not work with the trainer anymore and I could just do it by myself. But please do your research on what trainers you're doing. A lot of trainers are not certified like they should be and some trainers don't have the best intentions in mind. Don't just try and pick up the first trainer that you find. What is your split routine like? So if you don't know a split Split is kind of how you separate your workouts each day. So I have a quad day, I have a back and biceps day where I will work on back and biceps in the same day. I have a hamstrings day. I have a chest, triceps and shoulders day where I will do all those things at once. So that's four days of weightlifting and then one day of the week, I'll either choose to go on a hike or I'll do hot yoga. So I'm working out roughly between four and five times a week. For some people, they only wanna exercise two to three times a week and that's what's best and optimal for their health. Some people wanna do four to five times a week. It's different for everyone. A lot of times you also might hear people call them pull or push days. Pull is a day where you're doing something like back and biceps where you're doing a lot of pull movements when you're working out and push is a lot of chest and triceps and shoulders where you're pushing when you're working out. If that makes sense. I like to split up my legs into two days so I'm not overworking myself and split up my push and pull days for my upper body. How do I know how to do a certain workout or machine? Literally Google, TikTok, or YouTube. And I'm not joking, still to this day, if I don't remember how to do a certain workout, I will literally Google it. For example, you can literally Google deadlift form and you can look at proper form on there. You can watch a YouTube video and it'll be like a quick 60 second video. I do this all the time, still to this day. If you're at a certain workout machine, like let's say a hamstring extension, Literally go on YouTube and look up hamstring extension machine and it'll teach you how to use it. TikTok has even been great for it. If I need like a quick tutorial on how to do something, it's been amazing. Form is also so important when working out. Like I said, I'm not a trainer, so I can't like go into too much depth into it, but always having really good posture is important. And the more I've exercised, especially my back and my core muscles, the more better posture I have. Seriously, do not be afraid of being in the middle of the gym and Googling how to do a certain exercise. If you're confused and you wanna have a quad day, you can go on YouTube and look up quad day exercises and you can write it down in your notes app or you can screenshot them and you can do those workouts in that day. There's literally no shame in that. You'd be surprised most people do that in the gym. If you wanna find specific workouts, form, how to do certain body parts, work certain muscles. I highly recommend these creators on YouTube and also some on TikTok. These are amazing creators that I've used over the years and can teach you a whole lot more because they are much more of experts than I am in that field. Like I said, in my future vlogs, I'm gonna be showing some of my workouts if you're like looking for some ideas, but please know that I'm not a trainer. I never wanna give the wrong advice to anyone, but I also did wanna show that someone, a little normie like me, can go to the gym and have a passion for it and learn everything from knowing absolutely nothing about it. It's possible and maybe it'll even become something really important to you one day. Lifting has helped my mental health so much. It's a great stress relief. I always feel less anxious after I go and just sets like a positive tone to my day. Also with like mental illness, people will always tell you, exercise is so good for you. I was always like, bullshit. That's, it's not gonna help me. And everyone is different, of course, but I find that it helps me immensely. Doesn't cure it. Well, I wish it did. I wish I could deadlift my mental illness away, but be sure to check out my vlogs in the future if you wanna see my specific workouts. If you like this video, please make sure that you leave it a like because it also helps so much. Also, make sure that you subscribe if you wanna be nasty, if not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure I have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If you wanna follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Tpop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you wanna follow me on my TikToks at Nikki Nasty. Thank you so much, Ombre, for sponsoring today's video. Go forth, go be a little gym rat. Bye. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>